Good Wednesday morning. Today is December the 16th. Today is the day that Tiffany Robinson Butler's mother will be laid to rest. But let me just tell you something about being laid to rest. That's something that we use here because the minute Sister Robinson passed, she wasn't laying down to rest. She was rejoicing and she was praising God and she was dancing and she was singing. So this morning, we will be going to that funeral, but I'm going to tell you something. There's rejoicing in heaven today. There, the angels are gathered around the throne room of God, rejoicing, celebrating <clears throat> that another precious soul is there with them. Listen, I've lost my mom. I lost my mom and my dad many years ago. And it does not feel like celebration. It does not feel like a time of rejoicing. I can tell you that for a fact. And both of my parents were wonderful Christians. <clears throat> so on this day, we will go and we will speak with Tiffany and we will love on Tiffany and Stephen and, and we will pray for them because no matter what you've heard people say about, oh, you know, uh, what a day, you know, this, it's not a day for a long faces or crying. Somebody told me that when mother died. Oh, no, no, this is not a day for you to look sad. Uh, of course, it's a day for us to be sad. Someone who has been the biggest part of our life has now passed and gone on to glory. And so it is... It is hard. It is, it's a sad, sad time. So if someone in your life has lost a loved one, I'm just going to tell you, we need to stand with them. We need to stand for them. We need to be loving on them. Today, I'm going to look at Proverbs 15. We're just going to be looking for a few minutes. And I know some of you who are going to be joining late are going to say so what is happening but uh, i think i mentioned uh, last week that today we would be having a uh, bible study a little bit early we're going to say you know we're going to be a little bit early today because steve and i will be going out to the services uh, it will be streaming it's thornton funeral home and beyond that i don't know what to tell you but thornton funeral home is doing this service and uh uh, it's at the funeral home. So, um, if you know Tiffany Robinson Butler, then I'm going to ask you to give her a call or send her a text or send her a card. Just let her know that you're thinking about her and praying for her. So, December the 16th. What a day. What a wonderful day to be alive and to be well. I've been listening to the Weather Channel and they're all so excited. Um, Cantori, Jim Cantori is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania and he's, they're thinking there's gonna be um, snow and uh, sleet and snow thunder, which gets him, you know, to running around like a crazy person. And depending on what you listen to, listen DC is just on this crazy line crazy line because I just got a thing on my um, cell phone that said uh, expect a brief snow here shortly. Now I know it looks like it's a white out snowstorm behind me and I don't know what is going on with my iPad because if I lean that way you can see it's not doing anything outside right now. Nothing is happening. Uh, so but I don't I don't know if it's my hair attracting <laughs> <laughs> casting the light. I don't know what's happening, but uh, it's not doing anything here yet. Uh, but stay safe wherever you are, and depending on um, what channel you're listening to or, or what forecast. I think today is one of those days that, especially for us here in this area, we're just going to look out the window and say, oh, it is snowing. It is snowing. Or, oh, we're going to look out the window and say, oh, well, it stopped or whatever because I'm, I'm not sure uh, anybody knows what our weather is going to be exactly like today. 
Now listen, you're going to hear the workers downstairs. They're almost finished. They're almost finished. They're almost finished. And so um, that's not um, something dreadful happening. It's uh, something wonderful happening. It's the workers downstairs finishing my floor. All right. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15 is very powerful. It's very powerful. It does not sound like something that you're like, oh. But it is an oh, aha moment for us in God's word. Because it says a gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Uh, one of the theologians that I read uh, uh, talking about this, just this one little verse, it says, imagine that a gentle answer or a kind word or uh, uh, someone gentle, let's just say gentle. I love that word, gentle. Uh, you know, when my grandkids were small and so even, even now, you know, we'll have to remind Oscar, you know, if he's getting ready to pick up an, uh, one of the animals or we'll say, be gentle, be gentle. And he, he knows what that means. Be gentle, be gentle. But one of the theologians that I read said, imagine that a gentle word, a gentle word is like oil being poured on, like oil being poured on and, and being able to heal or being able to soothe, just oil being poured on that thing. But then a harsh word, imagine that being like oil being poured on fire. If you take oil and you pour it on fire, you're going to get a bigger blaze. It's going to stir that blaze up. A gentle answer, if you pour that thing on a wound, if you pour that thing on somebody, that's that's healing. It's very healing. You know, I was thinking this morning, we have a, a really wonderful, sweet <coughs> friend, and he's a very literal person. He's a very literal person, and he does he doesn't really fully appreciate puns or when you're <clears throat> just kind of teasing. He's just very literal. And I was thinking about <clears throat> that young man, and I was thinking about the fact that sarcasm, if somebody were to use sarcasm with him, he wouldn't really fully grasp that you were being sarcastic. It would just be hurtful. For him, it would just be hurtful. I, I really am not a big fan of sarcasm anyway. Because so many times, sarcasm, even, even after you've said it, even if you say, oh, you know I was just kidding with you, you know I was just kidding with you, but sometimes it has the edge of truth in it that is so hurtful. It's so hurtful. Sarcasm. You, you can't use sarcasm on a baby because they don't understand that you're just being ugly, to tell you the truth, mean. They just hear that edge to your voice and they see it on your face, which makes them think you're being ugly to them, or you're hurting them, or you're scolding them. I have always taught any teacher I've ever worked with, do not, do not use sarcasm on a child. Do not use sarcasm on a child. Because it's just so hurtful. This is saying a gentle word is soothing. Just a, a sweet, gentle word is so soothing. I can also tell you <clears throat> that in my many years of being alive, that if somebody is being sarcastic with me and I come back at them with a gentle word, it calms that situation down. And sometimes I think it shames the other person. There have been times when I have been sarcastic in my own life. 
you know, I, I just have. And I always regret it. I always regret it. It's one of those things where I, I wake up during the night and I think, why on earth did I say that sarcasm is not necessary speech? I mean, has it gone through the <clears throat> through the process of is is it good? Is it necessary? Is it wholesome? Does it encourage the other person? Does it fulfill anything in their life that is good and trustworthy and things that they need? No, no, it does not. Sarcasm is just <clears throat> when we use our speech for being nasty, for being nasty. Sarcasm, no room for it. Fierce words, no need for it. I was, I was talking to one of my granddaughters this week and I, we were talking about people who use bad language. And I said, Maya, you've got such a beautiful mouth. I hope it never has bad language in it. Because there is never a reason to use bad language. I, I've heard people say, well, this movie has bad language in it, but it's justified. I, I, don't, I don't get that. When God's word clearly says to us, a gentle answer. A kind answer. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. The mouth of the fool, they're just going to say stupid stuff. They're just going to say evil stuff. They're going to use bad language. As, <coughs> as though it were language, they're using bad language. <coughs> the workers are coming in and out the door. Hans, come here, baby. All right, the tongue of the wise, but the tongue of the wise, it commends knowledge. The tongue of the wise. Do you want to be considered wise? I do. God's given us this wisdom, and if we don't use it, we're being foolish. So if God is giving us wisdom, and we're using it, and we're speaking it, and we're speaking these things that we've been talking about for months, we are speaking this not only into other people, which absolutely I hope we are, but also we're speaking it into our own soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That is speaking wisdom into my own soul, my own spirit. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, that includes my speech. That includes everything I'm saying. I do not always speak wisdom. I, just the other day, I said something. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, it wasn't mean or hurtful. It was just a, a dumb thing to say. And, and I looked over down at Steve and I said, that is... That has got to be one of the dumbest things I've ever said. Or have you ever said something and then you said, that's not even what I meant to say. Wisdom. Wisdom, that means we're accepting knowledge and we're releasing knowledge. When we commend it, we're accepting it and we're releasing it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I highly recommend having wisdom. I highly recommend it. Sally and I are reading this book right now, Get Out of Your Head, and it's so awesome. It's just filled with wisdom. Sally had started reading it, and then she sent then she sent me a copy of it. Come on this way. And then she sent me a copy of it, and we're in exactly the same place reading it, and it is awesome. But one of the things is get out of your own head and speak wisdom. Speak wisdom into other people. Speak wisdom into yourself. So it says, I'm in Proverbs 15, Proverbs 15, and now I'm on two. Now I'm going to look at three. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Now, we've been talking about the tongue, and we're getting ready to keep talking about the tongue. So I'm going to say that in this and that this verse in the middle of this chapter has got to be talking about the Lord is watching and he knows what we're saying. Forget about Santa Claus knowing what you're saying and what you're doing and, and who you are and all of that. The eyes of the Lord, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. 
So if you think that you can sneak off and have a weekend off and, and say these things or do these things, you're wrong. Because the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Terry said, I have to ask God to help me with my mouth every day. All of us do. All of us do. It's, a, it's, it's an intentional thing. It's an intentional thing. I started this morning at 9.15 because I'm going to be going to a funeral service. I, now that I've leaned forward, I can see some of these comments. So that's what I'm letting you know. All right. So Proverbs 15, five, uh, 4 says, The tongue that brings healing is a true... There's a situation for the liar, too. But for those that you are speaking to, that you are lying to, it just crushes the spirit. I hate for somebody to lie to me. I hate it. We know, we know these people who want to come in and just lie to you and, and bring stuff into your life that's slanderous and hurtful and cruel. Slanderous and hurtful and cruel. This is saying, you know what? It just crushes the spirit. But the, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. We just spoke about, we just spoke about that there are things in our life that that just bring healing. When we bring healing words, it's like pouring the oil on a wound. Today, I hope that's what we're doing. We're bringing healing words. We're bringing kind words. We're bringing sweet words. Pray for Tiffany today. Because today, she's going to be a very, very precarious situation because she's lost her mother. I can tell you for a fact. When Sally and Sharon and I lost our mother, it has become a dividing line in my history. May 22nd, 1998. <clears throat> I can tell you where I was. I can tell you what it felt like. I can tell you the first person I turned to and began to cry. I can tell you how we just felt crushed. But I can also tell you the people who poured into my spirit that day, who poured into my life that day, who blessed me, who called me. When Steve's um, mother no father passed. Um, Steve lost his mother and dad within 11 months of each other. First his mother and then his dad. And we were sitting at the kitchen table. Uh, Steve was resting for a minute and one of Steve's cousins, Avis, and uh, his aunt, Aline, we were sitting at the kitchen table talking and I got a call and to tell you the truth, because we were all sitting there talking, this was Teal's sister, and she was really grieving, and so was I. And, and uh, I got this call, and I let it go to voicemail. And it was Sarah Humphreys singing, It is well with my soul. And that poured into the three of us as I played that out loud. We listened to it over and over and over. It brought healing into our spirits. Today, I'm going to kind of give you a challenge. Who do you need to speak healing into today? Who do you need to speak encouragement into today? Aline Robinson has been sending me the most precious cards and texts during this time. And I know she's going through a lot of stuff, but she continues to pour into me and bless me and comfort me. And I can't tell you what that has meant. So many of you continue to call me and bless me and, and send me little uh, encouraging text or Pat Jeffords, come here Hans, Pat Jeffords sent me a text the other day that just really encouraged me. Today, let's pour in the oil and the wine with our words in Christ's holy.
holy name. I pray that you are blessed today. I pray that you are a blessing. I pray that God strengthens you. Father, be with us today. Father, be with the Robinson family today. And bless them and keep them. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock.